views and opinions expressed by callers, guests, and hosts do not necessarily reflect those of the Black Talk Radio Network and Black Talk Media Project. Black Talk Radio is new black media for the new millennium. Dinar would have had serious consequences for the world financial system, but may also have empowered the people of Africa, something black activists say the U.S. wants to avoid at all costs. We're slicing cake. We're slicing cake. We're slicing cake. Say the U.S. wants to avoid at all costs. We're slicing cake. Say the U.S. wants to avoid at all costs. We're slicing cake. Gaddafi didn't give up. In the months leading up to the military intervention, he called on African and Muslim nations to join together to create this new currency that would rival the dollar and euro. They would sell oil and other resources around the world only for gold dinars. It's an idea that would shift the economic balance of the world. Countries' wealth would depend on how much gold they have, not how many dollars they trade. And Libya has 144 tons of gold. Welcome, welcome, everyone, to Tando Radio Show, brought to you by Black Talk Radio Network. I'm your host, Dave, from L.A., coming to you live from FEMA Region Number 9, and just want to thank you all for, excuse me, FEMA Region Number 6, <laughs> fell back into California. want to just thank you all for listening to Tando Radio Show, and you being who you are, greatly, greatly appreciate you all, and it's so important. Today is Tuesday. June the 20th, 2017, and we have a live show for you today. Just And once again, thank you for participating in today in Tando Radio Show. If you'd like to get in on the conversation during the show today, please give us a call, 866-510-9025, 866-510-9025. And just before we get going today, I'm going to say that um, it's going to um, – today I'm going to – we're going to start a, a somewhat kind of a series uh, for you all uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to bring you as much information as I possibly can. Um, and it's, you know, hopefully, you know, it's something that you value. Um, I, what I want to do is that I, I'm going to, to to start today's show, and then I'm going to get into how we usually start today's show. Today's show is, I think, is a going to be a series of shows that are very, very important. And today would be the first start of the show, so I want to just lay this out before we jump into the overall show today. Today's show uh, is the topic is in a major conflict, the U.S. loses it all, how this could happen. And what I want to do is I want to kind of lay out um, scenarios, ideas, and possibilities for just this to happen, because in today's World, I don't think the U.S. is going to go into a military confrontation just against one nation. It's going to be a multifaceted uh, military confrontation, both on the traditional standpoint of military confrontation and on the digital age battles of conflict, conflict battles. And those are going to be much more elaborate in in much more devastating than the old traditional battlefields. So today's show is a ma- in a major global conflict, the U.S. loses it all, how this could happen. And I meant to put this as a question, and I didn't put that as a question, I meant to put the question mark in, I forgot, but it's cool. But I really want you to think about some things as we go through this. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to, and we'll get into to the rest of the show in a second. But what I'm going to try to do is I want to introduce you to some of the military capabilities of other countries I think that the U.S. could be engaging in, as well as the digital uh, capabilities of these countries. Because, as I said, I don't think that it's going to be a, a solely uh, single-front 
engagement in today's world. It just doesn't have to be that way because of technology and because of the use of technology, which is already engaged. So when I look at it from the, from the digital standpoint and from the traditional battlefront, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, country by country and then at the end put it all together and see what we may be looking at in the future. Hopefully this is something that you will um, – See the value in it. Hopefully, it's something that you will uh, will cause you to do some of your own research, make some of your own strategical decisions that are in your best interest, your family's best interest, and our community's best interest. That is my overall intention. My intention is never in, with anything on Tando Radio Show to bring a exclusive day for LA opinion. Mine is just to give you some information so that you will be motivated to do some of your own research. Start to ask. There's a difference between a question and questioning. A question is much more valuable than an answer because a, a question is eternal while the an answer is temporary. Questioning is, a, is an act of sovereignty. It's not just asking a question. No, it's questioning. It's questioning what's in your best interest. What serves your, your sovereignty? What protects your self-determination? What establishes your prosperity? That's what questioning does. It's a continuous event that you have to give energy to, and it's not just you asking, it's seeking the answers from what the great creator has given us the ability to do, to discern the energy that's there. And I think that's why questioning is so, so important. It's not just you asking someone a question because that is, you're looking for an answer individual. Questioning is that you actually ask yourself a question and you investigate and seek out the truth for yourself. Big difference. So, that's what we're going to be doing. Looking forward to that. Hopefully, uh, this will be something that's beneficial to you and to your family and to our overall community. So, we must engage in this type of questioning. So, with that being said, everyone, continue to support Black Talk Radio Network by going to the website for this network, and that is www.blacktalkradionetwork.com, www.blacktalkradionetwork.com, and there is the donation icon that's there. Please give some of your financial energy so that this network can continue to grow and continue to bring you what you have tre treasured and you have, you have already considered to be extremely valuable and it will be even more going forward. So it is you that are the sponsors. It is you that are the donors. It, are, it is you that are, are the ones that are the overall pullers of Black Talk Radio Network to get it where it needs to go so that those that we have yet not named will be thoroughly, thoroughly, I mean, will, thorough, will have the thorough uh, attributes and abilities to ask a question and have the spirit of questioning. So you can do that by going to www.blacktalkradionetwork. Another way that you can support the network is by engaging in and becoming a member in BTR community, which you'll also find on the homepage for this website. And it, it will, you will see it as a capital B with a black background. And join that for only $24 a year, and you can uh, post and do and, and conduct all of your routine social media activities outside of the mainstream media so that you won't be as adversely affected as we all are by the overall mainstream ones from FedBook to tweeting on and telling on folks and everything else and telling, uh, telling on ourselves. It's, this is why questioning is so, so important. We, we, you know, it, it, it develops a, a warrior of you. So that is where you could do it. It's the only place that I post. So come on over for $24 a year, and you can promote yourself, your business, uh, events that you think that are worthy. You could do that there. Also, if you would like to acquire real money, you could go to Prosperity Mint, P-R-O-S-P-E-R-I-T-Y, M-I-N-T.com. 
and check out what's in inventory there and acquire and acquire real money, the great creator's money that was given to you or, or the great creator's assets that do, that do support sustainable life forms to where you don't have to be a slave of the system. Very, very true. And this is, it can be argued by other people, but the truth stands alone. The truth is the truth. And the truth of the matter is that this is one of the assets one of the keystone assets that the great creator has put for the sustainability of our overall uh, prosperity, our physical lives, and a part of our spiritual lives. And if you don't see that, that's because you know nothing about the overall. Some people think they know, but they really, really don't don't know because the process of questioning goes much, very, very far, and it tells a lot. So if you would like to engage in some of the overall uh, creators assets you definitely uh, can do that at Prosperity Mint and uh, that is there for you also uh, July the 1st is coming up we're going to have the Control Your Wealth seminar and you can go to, to Eventbrite and just click on a Control Your Wealth seminar that w will be given here in, in Dallas on July the 1st of 2017 from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. At the Central Library of Dallas, and that is at 1515 Young Street. And this is something that is going to be very beneficial to you all. Uh, we're going to, it's sponsored by Prosperity Mint, the Control Your Wealth Seminar, and it's $300 for single tickets and 550 for couples that will be coming to Dallas. And also, uh, if you would like to engage in it via the internet, you can do that as well. Um, and that is $300. You could just make a payment by way of the Eventbrite uh, format, or you can email info at prosperitymint.com uh, and just say, hey, you, are, you want to engage in that, and that's info at prosperitymint.com. Go to the Eventbrite um, listing, and you will see Prosperity Mint. Uh, control your worth, wealth by Prosperity Mint. You know, you have to do is hit info at Prosperity Mint if you would like to be a part of it via the Internet and just send a message to uh, Prosperity Mint um, in a, a way you can make payment via uh, PayPal as well that way uh, through sending the email and then so that uh, they'll know that you'll we'll know that you are uh, one of the individuals that will need to be set up for the uh, – for the internet because you're not going to be here in Dallas. So, and that's $300. Okay. All right. So, and at the uh, control your wealth seminar, very, very important. Uh, there will be an introduction, a one hour intro, uh, intro by prosperity mint to with some of the things that are going on. Um, I will be there. Prosperity mint is sponsoring. So I'm going to be, uh, you know, doing it, you know, running the whole thing. I'll be the MC, um, and looking forward to meeting you all. Also, uh, the second, uh, second hour, another hour will be, uh, be on trust and foundations, the importance of it, why you need to, to be engaging in it. And that's going to be put together by Legacy Wealth Management. And then uh, one hour of the Precious Metals class will be given by me. Um, but there's actually four hours to the class. And if you would like to do that uh, outside of that, you can also uh, email info at Prosperity Mint for the four-hour class uh, of the precious metals and one hour will be given at the uh, seminar and then there will be a debriefing for one hour looking at different uh, opportunities that you could be engaging in things that how to leverage certain things and things that you should be looking at that are very very pressing going forward in the future that is something that will benefit you and your family individually and collectively and the community at large and I'm looking forward to meeting you all and doing and starting our overall and furthering and active furtherance in our collective prudence very very important so looking forward to that so that's uh, July the 1st, right around the corner. Come on down to Dallas. Um, if you're not able to come to Dallas, ah, wish we could, you know, we'll see. But don't worry about it. We still, uh, you'll still be able to have access to it all via the Internet um, and just info prosperity meant saying that you want to uh, be uh, a part of the Internet uh, platform for the Control Your Wealth seminar. Okay, so next, also, if you would like to engage in the cryptocurrencies with us, all you have to do is go to ourcryptocurrency.com, ourcryptocurrency.com, and sign up for the Trade Coin Club. 
uh, with us, and we will definitely uh, get you situated with that so that you can start to trade the cryptocurrencies and use that as another means of another uh, revenue stream for you. Very, very important. I'll just tell you I'm thoroughly, thoroughly pleased with it. Um, had an opportunity, um, actually would be surprised, uh, to make a very, very significant uh, amount of cash that I would always be using for, um, you know, my overall preparing and everything else. But I decided to, to, to hold off. Could have did it. Um, actually, would have had, uh, let me see, five-digit um, earnings. Um, would have been over um, over twenty twenty some uh, thousand dollars in currency of, of U.S. currency of cash, but it, I decided not to do it. Um, decided to to hold off, and my overall entry of that was very 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 small. It was right around the less than I think it was some some of it was eight dollars, some of it was twelve dollars, and some of it was twenty dollars. Uh, from my entry point uh, for some of the cryptocurrencies, and these, and yesterday I could have did that, but I decided not to. I'm sticking to uh, my game plan. Very, very important. So um, some of these things uh, you could be doing as well, and some of these things we'll be sharing with you all um, with that. And those of you that have signed up for that, uh, we will definitely uh, will be meeting. Uh, so those of you that are already in the Trade Coin Club, we. We'll probably have uh, a, a, a uh, get together for you all on Friday. Uh, on Friday, I'll let you, let you know uh, for for the trading and everything else. So to get you all squared away, so we can have uh, and that'll be right after Tando Radio Show. Okay. So all right. So let's jump into what's in the news and good things and and want to hurry up. The laid out what today's show is all about. Um, it's um. In a major global conflict, the U.S. loses it, loses it all. How this could happen, and it should be how could this happen, is what I is what I meant to say as a question mark. But we'll keep it right where it is. So um, I laid it out when we first started the show what this is going to be about. So bear with me on that. I'm looking forward to getting to that. It's a lot, a lot of information. So just. Be, uh, just to know that. All right, so let's jump into what's in the news. Uh, first article, uh, I posted this one from Huffington Post. Panama's president slightly shoots down Trump's brag about U.S. building Panama Canal. Very, And there's a, a significant reason for that is because Panama is in bed with China right now, majorly. This is why the U.S. wanted to have Panama called on the carpet, and what really happened? It was a reversal. U.S. Pre uh, celebrity figurehead, U.S. President Trump hosted Panamanian President Juan Carlos at the White House on Monday, and took the opportunity to boast about a certain U.S.-led construction project aboard the Panama Canal, doing quite well. I think we did a good job building it right. Trump ass. Oh, no, he says, I think we did a good job building it, right? Trump ass. And so let me just pull this up really quickly because this has everything to do with what we're talking about to, today in today's show. So let me just read this real quick to you all. So U.S., uh, let me pick up where I was. And it says... One second. This is, um, give me one second. Okay. U.S. Uh, President Donald Trump held, uh, hosted Panamanian President Juan Carlos at the White House on Monday and took the opportunity to boast about a certain U.S. led construction project abroad. abroad. The uh, Panama Canal is doing quite well. I think we did a good job building it, right? Trump asked. The Panamanian President immediately reminded Trump that. He was taking, was, excuse me, he was talking about a project completed in 1914. Yeah, 100 years ago, he shot back at Trump continues <laughs> to talk over him. Think, <laughs> things are going well in Panama, added Trump. The responsibility, the, excuse me, the relationship has been very strong, and we are developing new things to do and only getting stronger. The two leaders then shook hands 
<laughs> like two normal human beings, which isn't always the case <laughs> when Trump is involved. And uh, this was quite, quite, and I want to play this real quickly because so that you can hear for yourself. Uh, very, very important here. Here we, here we go. Let me, hold on. Let me, real quick, let me set this up. We're going to spend quite a bit of time today. Panama Canal is doing quite Ooh, let me fix this. Well, I think we did a good job building it, right? It's very good job. But uh, that one, hold on. One second. My format won't allow it to, to for me to move it back. So here we go. All right, let's hear it. Stop this one. Here we go. All right, here we go. It's our great honor to have President and Mrs. Varela from Panama. We have many things to discuss. We're going to spend quite a bit of time today. Panama. Now is doing quite well. I think we did a good job building it, right? Yeah. Well, a very good job. But uh, things are going well in Panama. Uh, the relationship is very strong. We are developing new things to do. And uh, let me start it over. Here it goes. I had to turn it up. You have President and Mrs. Varela from Panama. We have many things to discuss. Uh, we're going to spend quite a bit of time today. Uh, Panama Canal is doing quite well. I think we did a good job building it, right? Yeah. Well, very good job. Yeah. But uh, things are going well in Panama. Uh, the relationship has been very strong. We are developing new things to do and uh, only getting stronger. And our also friendship with the president is very, very good. So I just want to thank you very much. And it is an honor to have you at the White House. Thank you. Okay, so I played that for this re reason. You probably, I don't know if you could hear, but the Panamanian, celebrity figurehead Panamanian president said, yeah, over 100 years ago. <laughs> and then Trump talked right over him. Uh, so why is that? Because there is really, really a purge of the U.S. that is happening. So I just wanted to play that uh, for you real quick. So uh, I want to get right back into what's in the news. Then next article that was posted from my man Raj posted this one from the Cerebly Naive Network. FBI director, FBI director nominee removed reference to cases involving Re Russian government from the law firm's bio. Check out that article. Next article, I posted this one from Sputnik News. F-15 shoes down uh, pro-Syrian government armed drone today. Check out that article. Next article from Sputnik News. And these are all things that have everything to do with what today's, today's underlying show will be. It's from, I posted this one from Sputnik News. Move this down. Austria slams U.S. extreme. Austria slams the U.S. Extremely disappointing decision on anti-Russian sanctions. Very, very important. Check out that article. Next article comes from uh, Lion Like a Fox News. Breaking news: Armed Russian, armed Russian jets comes within five feet of U.S. reconnaissance jet. Check out that that happened today as well. Um, next article comes from the Guardian. I posted this one from The Guardian. The war after ISIS. Has Trump opened the door to conflict with Iran? Well, it wasn't just celebrity figurehead Trump. This has been the overall objective for a very long time and is going to continue to speed up. Check out that article and uh, uh, please uh, engage in some of these articles. Very, very important. Next article, I posted this one from uh, the BCC, which is a a nothing but a proxy um British intelligence narration um, and propaganda that's always given just like Cerebly Naive Network. And I would say this would be the British uh, blood uh, cravers. Yeah, that's a good one. So check out that. Uh, whoa, I didn't say what the article was. Okay, here's the article. Uh, Syria conflict. Let me move this down. 
Australia suspends military air operations. Australia says it will temporarily suspend its military air operations over Syria after a warning from Russia that it would treat aircraft from the U.S.-led coalition as potential targets. The pause was a precautionary measure, the government said, without giving details. Moscow warning came after the U.S. shot down a Syrian plane um, on Sunday. So Australia said, um, we're out. Smart move, Australia. Smart move. Next, uh, from Lion Like a Fox News, Kim Jong-un lives in fear of assassination by Western decapitation teams, says the report. Now, I put this one in here for a reason. Put that in there because once we get to the North Korea side of the war, um, this is why North Korea will likely join the war. Um, next um, article, uh, my man Raj posted this one from Cerebrally Naive Network. UK, Ukraine's president, Ukraine leader, gets low-key welcome at the uh, White House. So check out that article. Uh, really good one. Man, Raj, this one was – I'm so glad Raj posted this one. we got to do a show just on this. Um, I know when I was um, – when I had, had an opportunity to listen to uh, Jerry and, and, um, and Raj's show – uh, which is a very good show. I definitely suggest uh, you all to uh, engage in that. Um, once one of the brothers come on uh, as a caller or something, um, have them tell you when that is. Definitely uh, had a, I think it was on Friday, I believe it was, um, had an opportunity to listen to their show for the for the first time. Uh, very, very good, good, good show. Had a blast. Thank you, brothers, for um, for doing what you're doing. And then uh, one of the things that, that uh, when we were talking there, we talked about um, – it was um, po- pointing out how how I thought that many of us are addicted to this social media um, thing, and uh, you know everybody gave their point of view. Jerry gave the, his, and then um, Roz uh, jumped in on his, and um, and then you know I gave mine on that particular uh, subject. And this is this really exempt as as Roz put here. Roz, post, Roz posted this one in. Um, and I definitely I'm going to do a show with this one. I definitely, hopefully, Jerry and Raz are um, engage in, in calling in on that one. This one is from um, BCC, the British, the British uh, blood uh, cravers. And he says, and this was his commentary, thus exemplifies the mental illness social media creates. Man uh, jangled, move this down. Man jangled from dangling, I mean, excuse me, move this down. Man jailed for dangling baby from window in algae. Wow, this is crazy. This, this, is, this is just absolutely, a man actually puts his child, I'm not quite sure I didn't read the article. It says a court in algae has sent a man to, a, to two years in prison for dangling, it was his child, his baby out of the window in order to attract Lights on Facebook. The father posted a picture of himself holding the baby outside of a window in a high-rise building with the caption, 1,000 likes or I will drop him. What? Not surprised at all. This is what, one of the reasons why I wanted to get off of that clandestine operation known as Fed book. Yes, it, it has some benefits, but just like all drugs, they have some temporary benefit, but while the overall harmful, synthetic harmful effects are, are affecting your natural body, your ma- natural psyche, your natural way of thinking, your balanced way of thinking, this is unbalanced. And this is foolishly unbalanced but this is what is being fostered on those platforms. And there is an addiction that goes along with, and in one of the brothers, actually when we talked about the addiction to, um, made the point, and one of the brothers actually, um, I don't remember what his name was. Oh, was, his name is on the tip of my tongue, and said that, and I believe he he's a nurse uh, or 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 in the medical field. I'm not quite sure what his overall um, occupation is, but I believe he's in the medical field. And he made the point that there are endorphins that are released by people getting likes off of Facebook. And this is 
some of the same that in, in some of the th- same things that happen within drugs. You know the the the, the dopamines and in well, let me make sure that's right. I'm not quite sure. So um, <laughs> I'm, I'm talking to myself on that one. So and it's true. It's definitely, definitely true. I don't think that you need a medical study to know that. Look at how engrossed people are in it. And the brother laid it out perfectly. And I've, we've been talking about I've been talking about this for, for a, while, uh, a very long time, about the overall addiction to this. And, you know, we have more of a relationship with our Facebook profile than we do with people around us. Everybody walks around with their head down in their phone because they're addicted to it. And this individual is showing the effects of his addiction. 1,000 likes or I will drop him. But see, we look at this as extreme. But how much time do we spend with this stuff, this counterproductive, this counterintuitive? Yes, there are some good things that are on different platforms yes 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 but those things could never just like anything else those things you should never ever ever allow them to overtake your overall good intentions and i think that if you know these things then you'll be able to use them without the overall addiction you'll be able to use them for what they're for what is capable for what you're capable to use it for instead of it using you this is the system and and Fedbook using its subscribers, not the subscribers using Fedbook. And many of us don't see that because how it's going to play out in the future is that Fedbook is going to tell you exactly what to think, how to feel, and everything else. Why? Because they're going to control what you see they've already had. How many people do you know get in Facebook? Some of you may know Facebook prison. A lot, there's a whole lot that goes along with this stuff, and there's more to it than just me. They didn't create this for your comfortability. They created it for their ability to control. That's what, if you didn't create this, you really can't say what is true intentions are. Guess what? I can't, ev- I can't either. But what I do see is I see the evidence towards the truth. And the evidence is in one of the things about the truth it is that it doesn't need me nor you. We need the truth. The truth don't need us. And this is extremely dangerous. One of the reasons why I no longer use that platform. I no longer use that platform. I don't need it. I don't want its effects. Now, those of you that do use it, that's fine. That's perfectly fine within your sphere. You, there are many things that you can learn from it. There are many things that I learned from it. But I know how I resonate. And how I resonate, I realize that this ain't me. It took me, I'm going to tell you, I was only on that book for RDP and for, for SGG, groups that, that, I, that, that I had created to assist people. And... I didn't want to do it, but some of the people in RDP said, hey, Dave, this would be the most, the easiest way for us to disseminate information. I said, okay. And that was the only time that, because I didn't have a, an account with them at all. And I knew I wasn't going to be on there for long. I was going to do what I thought I needed to do, lay a foundation. Then I was going to quietly walk away. I don't need a spotlight. I don't need lights. I don't need 1,000 likes or I'll drop them. What I do need is the reconnection to our prosperity and the prosperity that the great creator has given to me as a gift of love. That's what I need. So, Raj, thank you for posting this. This is a show in on itself. I would love for for you and Jerry to, to jump in. Um, on this one, um, and we'll later probably do this on on Thursday. If you could, um, definitely let me know. All right, so next article. This one comes from, uh, Rise posted this one from Cerebrally Naive Money. 
who pays for if tax if Congress kills the state and local tax deduction? Who pays if Congress kills the state and local tax deduction? So hopefully my screen will stop moving. All right, great. Next article, uh, Arise posted this one. He said, I talked, his uh, commentary was, I talked about this before. And it's all related to the technocrat, uh, technocracy, uh, techno, techno, daggone, I can't say the word. Democracy, but just put techno, <laughs> technocracy. Yes. All right. So the world's first space nation. Check out that one. Good article. Thanks, Rise. Good one. Next one, Rise posted from Fox, uh, Lion Like a Fox News. Family sues water park after teen, uh, after teen's brain eating um, Abino's uh, death. Check out that one. Next article. This is a really, really good one. I'm glad uh, Rise posted this one. Where was this? I've seen this, this, this so I think she's a celebrity or something. I'm not sure. Oh, oh, this is the girl from, um, darn, um, with, with Stacey Dash, Clueless, <laughs> uh, Allison Sil- uh, Silverston, Alice Silverston feeds her son a, fe- a vegan diet, and Ra said, the things they do because they know the truth, there are things we do, let me move this down. The things they do because they know the truth are the things we should be doing to once know the truth. Once we overstand the system, we must change our behaviors accordingly. So, so true, Roz. And so check out that uh, as well. Next uh, article, Roz posted this from Nothing But um, Cons News, NBC News, Nothing But Cons News. And this is one, uh, as, uh, we play, put this one as well. R- uh, Rise posted this one. Russian jet comes within five feet of U.S. spy plane. Check out that. And was in the Baltic state. Next one, Rise posted. He said, everyone must watch this documentary series called America's War on Drugs, a history channel. Um, and it is um, a, such a powerful combination of the U.S. government, CIA. It is incredible. You can watch it, the first two episodes, uh, via the provided link. Um, and Rise posted this one from the uh, his, his Story channel, uh, America's, Dr- Drug on, America's War on Drugs, full episode. So check out that one. Um, something that I definitely will, will probably check out as well. Thanks, Rise, for posting that one. Next one, article comes from Rise. Um, this comes from the Associated Press. The U.S. military said it shot down an Iranian-made uh, drone. Um, that was a weapon, a, a weaponized Iranian-made drone. Uh, yes, we, and this is one we both posted t- this one together. Next, and then the last one. Oh no, it's two more. We got uh, from Cerebly Naive Network. First on CNN, U.S. shoots down another. Oh, let me. I already did that one. Sorry about that one. Repost. Then uh, next article, very, very important article here. This has to do with the sanctions against Russia. The treasure. Uh, this comes from the uh, www.ustreasury.gov. Sorry, the U.S. It comes from treasury.gov. Treasury uh, does. This. Treasury designates individuals and entities involved in the ongoing conflict in the Ukraine. Basically, they sanctioned them, and this is. Sanctions is how you get in the war, folks. Sanctions is how you get in the war. Next one, I posted this one from uh, Mish Talk. GE pensions time, GE, General Electric's pensions time bomb, shortfalls, 31 billion and rising. GE has the largest pension shortfall in the S&P 500, Standard & Poor's 500. It is 31 billion balance sheet hole that keeps growing. At $31 billion, GE's pensions shortfall is the biggest among the S&P 500 companies and 50% greater than any other company in the U.S. Pensions, where do you think they're going, ladies and gentlemen? Bye-bye, in my opinion. So that's what's in the news. Um, didn't mean to go that long in it, but there were some really, really good ones. Uh, Raj, thank you for posting that, that one and all the ones you did post. I uh, greatly appreciate you all. So if you have any questions or comments you'd like to get in on today's conversation or today's show, give us a call, 866-810-9025, 866-510-9025, and we'll definitely see you in 
in Q, and then um, also uh, we're going to, at some point t today, uh, Brother Davis, when you're ready, jump in. Uh, if you want to talk about Wise Wednesday, uh, definitely want to do that now or at the towards the end of the show. Uh, that will be great. Uh, see you there. And I'm going to go into today's show. Very, very important show. And then once again, I'm going to lay it out really quickly. What I want to do, it's, it's just so much what well, Brother Davis is there. So, uh, Brother Davis, you want to go ahead and uh, talk about Wise Wednesday tomorrow, my brother? Yes, I will, brother. It's always good to hear the voice of a friend, man. Yes, it hey, is. is. Yes, it is. Tomorrow night's show is going to deal directly with the cosmology of the earth. Now, why do I say cosmology of the earth? Because nothing has changed in the truth. When I say in truth, I mean air is produced the same way, water has always been the same way, there is a fluctuation of currents that encircle the earth the same way. It's just that this connection is between us being humans and our ability to connect with the cosmology of the universe. We are part of this process. Now I'm going to start with sound, and I'm going to end with the five senses. So please. Stay tuned tomorrow night and do come with pencils and papers because what makes truth is when you get a revelation about it. Okay, brother, thank you for the opportunity and I look forward to the rest of the show. Man, well said, brother Brother Davis. That is so, so true. So, so, so definitely glad that you're going to be uh, looking at sound tomorrow. Whew, man, the frequencies, so, so important, and some of the audible frequencies that are so and they're audible and they also have a harmonic frequency and not all our harmonics are our harmonics are are heard they're definitely definitely felt because they resonate man looking forward to that show uh brother davis thank you so much for you being who you are and what you do okay so how many time we got plenty of time all right so what we're going to do is today's show is in a major global conflict the u.s loses it all how this could happen and it also could have read could this happen and so what i want to do is as i said in the beginning of the show i want to lay out some of the some of the things that i'm seeing and how it could, could play out uh with the u.s getting into a military confrontation uh the old traditional one and the the one of the age of now which is digital and what that means so i want to lay out um how this could come about and what it could look like and so what I first want to do is take a look at the layout of a war with Russia. But now what I'm going to say about this is that this is not just the only contents of this war that's going to happen. I think what you're going to see is I'm actually, these are the countries that I'm going to uh, put in this series. I'm going to put and I do believe that the U.S. will be engaged in confrontation as they are already in mild forms of confrontations and to an extended point of the confrontation growing up to the consendo of the full-blown confrontation um, with a war with, with uh, these countries. And the countries that I want to lay out first the ones that I want to look at that this is going to possibly happen with simultaneously and individually and independently is, is going to be, in my opinion, is going to be a, a collective move with NATO and the U.S. against Russia. But not only there, NATO is going to be fractured, which it already is because Turkey is fracturing it and Germany is fracturing it with it. And I firmly believe that Germany will move to the side of Russia because of an article, um, not because of an article, just because of the overall um, how this is playing out and why this serves so well, but there are articles that kind of lead to that. The German ch uh, Chancellor Merkel said that uh, there will be a response from Germany if U.S. has sanctions against Russia. So they're moving towards it's Russia. Whoa. Cyber war. Whoa. Sorry about that. So let me fix this real quick. Okay. So I do think that that, that that portion of NATO will be fractured. And when that fracturing happens, all of NATO will fall apart. So there won't be NATO nations in, in war against Russia for very long. They, in my opinion, will actually roll over the Russia side. 
So then there's going to be, so Russia will be one, and Germany is going to be a smaller case that we'll bring into to point some, at some point in this series. Then it's going to be with um, Syria and Iran, which actually plays into, you actually could say with Syria, you could put Syria in with, with uh, Russia, so I will do that. Uh, with Syria, which we're already seeing actively right now and is only going to uh, 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 grow even further, then a, what would a war with Iran look like? And then with Iran and Russia as allies, with Syria as an ally, and also a war with China, with China, a war with China would look like, and a war with China um, as an ally with Germany, France, because wherever Germany goes, France has to go. Germany, and I think the lines will be Germany, France, China, Russia, the rest of the NATO nations that pull towards Russia, such as Turkey and some of the other nations that, that will pull towards uh, Russia. And I do, and I can definitely see uh, even Poland uh, going that route. Don't quote me on that. Um, but when you start to lose, it will happen. Ukraine as well. Uh, in Syria, in Iran, uh, Qatar, Yemen will all go towards the Russian side. Then I believe that Egypt and will, and then ultimately Jordan will have to as well. Saudi Arabia will as well. But the, the ones that I'm going to be looking at to, to bring all of these into, fo into fold is that the main staple ones are going to be Russia, Iran, China, uh, North Korea, Pakistan, Iraq, all of those will be the mainstay countries that will be in war against the U.S., basically all of the BRIC nations, and then the, the subline ones will be India, uh, will be India, Germany, France, and Britain. Ultimately, I think Britain, Britain will start with the U.S., but will, will, will roll over towards Russia and China's side. And once Britain does, so does Canada. Mexico, Venezuela, Colombia, Panama, Nicaragua, and Mexico will all roll towards China. And this will be what's going to happen. And I, and I want to lay out how this could, in my opinion, with some of your input, if you would like to input, how this all could play out. And so I want to start with the bigger nations first and foremost, okay? So with that being said, there is a real quick three-minute video because all of this is going to be the fun the old the traditional battlefield as well as the digital battlefield and i want to and they, they all have the different nuances as as we look at each country individually then at the end of the series we'll put them all together so that you could see this as this is unhappening as it is happening right now you can kind of see what's really going on. And I, I want to take it as, in a step-by-step -step approach, and I want to first start with Russia, okay? I want to start with Russia. And the reason why I want to start with Russia is because of on the global, uh, some of the global military powers. Um, if you look at, the global military powers. I'm going to go over those real quickly before we get too deep in this. Um, there's so much information on this, so just bear with me. If you look at it from from a military strength standings as of 2017 military uh, strength rankings, and this is um, something that you can find on globalfirepower.com. I'll post it later inside of BTR Tando. If you look at the two 
2017 military strength ranking, ranking, here are the top 10. We're just going to look at the top 10. And, and the top 10 is from the stronger to, it goes from the, the, the number one country all the way down. Number one country is the United States. Number two is Russia. Number three is uh, China. Number two, number four is India. Number five is France. Number six is the UK. Number seven is Japan. Number eight is Turkey. Number nine is Germany. Number 10 is Italy. Okay? Of those nations, we're going to be looking at uh, with, in, a, in engagement with, in comp, military confrontation, both digital and traditional, we're going to be looking at Russia, China, India will have a play into this, France will have a play into it, the UK will have a play into it, Japan will have a play into it, Turkey will, Germany will, and Italy. And of those, in my opinion, as this war starts to, to ramp up and it gets to its full at its peak before it reaches the crest and starts to go down. Just before it goes down, as it starts to go completely down to where it down towards where it ends, and as it goes up towards its overall, the U.S. will have allies such as India, the U.K., Japan. But as this moves along, India will switch. France will switch. The U.K. will switch. Japan will, will flip. Turkey is already, in my opinion, on the side, as well as Germany. And Italy will follow suit. Why? Because of many reasons. History being a part of it. So that is the top ten military countries, and we'll take a look at them in a more um, involved way. But I really do want to look at this from just Russia and the U.S. initially, and then we'll grow this out to the major countries and why and what a war with them individually will look like, and then a war with them with their allies collectively looks like, and then the U.S. with its allies. And you're going to see something, and this is just all my opinion, but this is based off of what's going on in the world as this purge continues. And this is very, very important because these are some of the things that if you know and if you prepare, prepare yourselves for you will definitely have uh, be able to put yourself and your family in our community in a position of advantage and not being taken advantage of. So here, um, here we go. Yes, and uh, strategic uh, Melanin said there's a lot of people from India, in, India employed by the U.S. Interesting situation. Yes, Ex extremely. And remember, uh, India is a part of the BRIC nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, and there's a whole list of over 100 uh, and, and over 100 and I think it's around 130 or more countries that are in that. The U.S. will never be a part of BRICS. They, they established the BRICS uh, to protect themselves from actually the U.S. So we're going to jump into this very, very important topic. But before we do that, we got a caller in queue. My man uh, Mel is there and want to uh, just give Mel an opportunity uh, to, to, to say something before we get hot and heavy into this. Welcome, Mel, to Tando Radio Show. Thank you for being a part of the show. What is your question or comment, brother? Hey, how y'all doing, man? What's up, brother? How you feeling? I'm good, man. I was just wondering, um, you know, from a standpoint globally, um, with us as melanated people and the world watches, you know, what we endure in this country, and um, what do you think we could do collectively to present ourselves globally as, I mean, because we're viewed around the globe as, you know, African Americans or whatever title they give us, but do you think that the other countries around the world, because I know that they really have a true, honest hate for America, but they do <laughs> understand that we are casualties of war type situation so mm -hmm. how would you suggest that we presented ourselves we would have to be collective and how would you uh, think we would present ourselves globally to do business to, to want to be welcomed uh, to do business globally kind of outside of the, 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 the nonsense that's going Man, on great, 
to detach ourselves from the actual American stigma? Man, great, great question, uh, Mel, brother. I, and and this is what I said. And I forgot to to mention you. Uh, we actually, uh, when I was talking about the the uh, addiction to Feb, uh, Facebook, um, Mel was actually um, on that uh, uh, show with uh, with Jerry and and Roz uh, that I happened to catch. So uh, these brothers do some great, great work, and Mel is is just as uh involved uh there even more so um and influential in that then he's you know he's extremely influential uh there as well and I, I truly truly appreciate it. Man, your question, Mel, is so so great. So uh Strategic Melon has said their show is fantastic. Yes it is. Uh definitely is. So what I'm gonna do um Mel is that I'm going to because we're getting ready to go to a commercial break. I'm gonna hold off to to uh, actually dialoguing with you on that until we come out of uh, until we come out of the commercial break. And uh, Strategic Melon said the science is on point. Talking about the show that uh, uh, Roz and Jerry have, um, definitely that is so so true. So I, I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed, and Mel is a big part of that as well as um, you are. Are, as, as well as you too, uh, Shatiz Melly, you're, you're a part of that as well. So listen, everyone, getting ready to go to a commercial break. We're going to go into uh, the first commercial break, and when we come back, we'll come right back to Mel. Mel, hold on real quickly. You're listening to Tando Radio Show. If you'd like to get in on the conversation, give us a call, 866-510-9025, 866-510-9025. You're listening to Tando Radio Show, brought to you by Black Talk Radio Network. We'll be right back after this quick commercial break. Project launched the digital radio platform Black Talk Radio Network, the first such platform created to serve the black community specifically. Black Talk Radio Network has grown with a variety of radio hosts, digital radio stations, and podcasters. Web analytics say Black Talk Radio, the platform, has an online reach that ranks it among the top independent black media platforms in the world. All of this is possible because of financial contributions to the nonprofit Black Talk Media Project. If you love the work we do, and the voices and perspectives we bring to you every day. Make a donation today to ensure that Black Talk Radio is here in the future. Black Talk Radio is new black media for the new millennium. Okay, welcome back, everyone, to Tando Radio Show, brought to you by Black Talk Radio Network. If you'd like to get in on the conversation, give us a call, 866-510-9025, 866-510-9025. And today's show is, in a major global conflict, the U.S. loses it all. How this could happen, or could this happen? And so my man Mel is um, there on the line, and he asked a great, great question. Uh, and his question was basically, how can we strategically play this and I, I don't want to put words into his, his mouth how can we strategically play this that would be put us in the best position as this come and I think that that as this starts to un, unfold globally and I think that that is a very very wise question and we should be questioning that ourselves and, and that's the way we should be doing it we should be asking it and I would just say this first of all I would say in my opinion first of all I hope we don't do something let me get to what I think I hope we don't do. I hope we don't buy into this program for what is really is what this agenda is really, really all about. Both from the standpoint of the falsehoods of the historical lies that have been told and the the overall hitting hiding of the truth 
And, and what I mean by that, the truth of the matter is that all of this, this whole system together is, is working as one, as one with many different tentacles. The, the overall objective is to subjugate and enslave every single living being on this planet. Because the overall, those that are, that are entangled in this understands the value of energy. And by the doctrination and, and the domestication of people, that un, that prevents us to be in, that prevents us to have the ability to see the true power of energy and what was given to us, the most powerful form of love and creation, that being our free will. That's what the system doesn't want us to know. So they develop a an elaborate asymmetrical way to counter that and for us to obey. So one of the things is that I hope we don't obey. I hope that we co course out what it is that is necessary and in our best interest. Hopefully we won't do the same things that we've done in the past because what will happen is that we will end up with the same results in the future. And what do I mean by that? Don't buy in to the falsehoods of what man has created. And I think the smartest way for us to play this, that's what I hope we don't do. Now, what I think is important for us to do is to realize that there is an objective that is adverse to our overall prosperity. Until we conform, until we really understand that and to see that we are really being globally attacked by all the, the, the distortions and by all of the lies and by all of the the methods, but the methods are, are there for an objective. Until we see that there is an objective, and what is that objective? To keep us in the state that we're in right now. The system hasn't changed because it worked. The, the thing that it promises is changes while it continues to do the same things and we get the same results. There is no energy transfer in a different direction. We haven't transferred our energy yet because we continue to play by the rules. So hopefully, I think one of the important things for us to do is this, sit back have an asymmetrical approach, design, create, and establish and build an independent direction first individually, as an individual. Do it as an individual and then do it collectively with those that are sincere around you. I would say don't fall into the falsehood that just because someone lives in this area that you live in, that they, have the, they resonate with the same energy as you. That is not factual and true. That is a myth. Don't think that someone, just because they live in the same city as you or state as you, that they have the same resonating spirit as you. That is not true. Once again, don't think because someone is in your family that they have that same resonating energy of, as you. That is not true. Don't think that someone that's in your home has that same energy as you. That is not true. The reason being is because of this. Each, every individual is the universe unto itself, has the power to create more of the universe individually so I think it's very important for us to take an asymmetrical approach it's not the popular one why are things popular because they are faddish things are faddish because that's one of the tools that the system uses the faddish tool of marching the faddish tool of voting the faddish tool of oh you can buy your way out of this the faddish tool that if you just cooperate if you become a good American citizen if you become a good religious uh, uh, um, uh, 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 if you just become good religiously, if if you become a good um, religious upholder, if you become this, if you become a club member, if you do, 
what the system is designed and reward you with because that's the big deception one of the biggest deceptions is that we think that when we get a false reward from the system that that is the organic god-given truth and it is nothing but a lie we can create false rewards we can create rewards that are actually rewarding and, and what is it rewarding bad behavior facebook is rewarding bad behavior Fedbook is rewarding bad behavior. So, I think we need to do something other than what we've done before in the past. We've never, ever taken an asymmetrical approach. We've always tried to voice what it is that we were going to do among people and have the system to augment our overall move, movement. And the system says, thank you. This is how you have to do it. If you want to do that, you need to get a permit. You need to get permission. And if you get permission, we will promote it and sponsor it. This is why they have, you have to get a permit to march. And what do we do? Let's go get a permit and walk. And it's not building anything. So I think to, to get it, to, to head it out, very, very important question. One of the most important strategical things is that we have to become some sovereign individually without any rewards. When you become so sovereign individually, you are not going to see any man-made rewards because that's not where your overall treasure is. That's a difficult thing to, for us to become is we have to be, have an asymmetrical mindset that we don't want the treasures of this lying system. And then once we do that, then their overall currency and their lies and everything else is not a temptation to us. Then we start to do what? have an asymmetrical approach to start building something that's, that's sustainable by us, by our energy. And then when we do that, what do you start doing? You start growing. Now, will you be threatened by this individual and that individual? Will there be those that will try to come and oppress? Yes. That's because they are deciding to do that. You can't stop somebody from deciding to do what they're going to do. That's why you may not resonate the same with every single person in your family, in, on your block, in your city, in your state, in your country, or in your geographical area, or so-called in your race. It doesn't work that way. That's a falsehood that man has created. So as these, these wars and everything start to come, I think the best thing for us to do is for you to do it individually first and then resonate with those individuals that, that resonate the same with you. And you'll find something. You'll find something that the energy of that overall group is powerful and it won't compromise. It won't compromise in its overall direction. And his di direction will be sincere. Will it achieve everything that it, it intends to, to achieve? If it has enough energy to do it, it will be able to overcome everything. What does it mean if you don't overcome things? How do you know how strong you are? Nothing will ever come. If you ever build a home, if you ever build a farm, if you ever build an elaborate garden, if you ever build anything that's sustainable for you, it's work involved. It's the expenditure of energy that you have to invest into it and is not going to be easy because building heaven one energetic block at a time consumes much energy especially in today's world because what the system wants you to do is the system wants you to, to fight it and to fight by on its terms by its calling by its permissions and this is why they will instigate 
say the only way for you to get ahead in this thing, the only way that you can do it is if you get some meaningful results in, in a microwave minute. And this is how you do it. They'll develop a bunch of populist stance. They'll develop great speakers. They'll develop, we've had all the greatest speeches in the world. Where has that gotten us? You can have all of the arms in the world. Where, have that, where has that gotten you? You're still in this world. But what distinguishes us in getting to where we need to go is us to create something outside of this system that we all see that's beneficial. There are very few that resonate that way. But those of you that do, I would say to you, resonate with those individuals that are like-minded and like spirit that way. And those that are not, that's not your problem. If the great creator can't make somebody do something, what makes you think that you can? And if you try to make somebody do something, that's because the system has thoroughly indoctrinated your frequency. You have become what you had to endure. I think that's one of the most important things is that we cannot become what we had to endure. Then it doesn't matter what they threaten you with. Famine can threaten you with physical force, threaten you with jail, threaten you with uh, destroying your generations and everything else. That's a physical temporal part. And we can't bow down to that. We have to have an asymmetrical approach and to guard that asymmetrical approach that we are sincere in building something that we're capable of building because of what the great creator gave us the abilities to do. Create your heaven. Create your land of milk and honey. That's what I think probably one of the most important things that we could do is to take an asymmetrical approach, let what they're going to do, do properly prepared for, for ourselves so that we won't be as adversely affected by it all so that we can build what it is that's necessary to build and start doing it. And you do it with yourself first. You didn't create the problems of the world. How in the world can you solve the problems of the world? Because if you go out to solve the problems of the world, you'll ignore the problem in front of you. We have a problem that needs to be energized and fixed. So I didn't mean to go that long into it. It was such a great, great question. I think that if we do those things, what will happen is that there will be some sincere and some false assistance that others will give. They will give it falsely in a way to, to, to actually infiltrate that type of energy and then there will be individuals throughout the world that will see what you're doing and start to resonate which is happening everywhere some have decided that they realize who they truly are and just because someone has the overall treasures of the world doesn't mean that they have any form of relevance in the internal spectrum. So if we, there will be some sincere individuals that will gravitate to you and you'll be able to discern them. If you question, if you have a spirit of questioning, you start to energize that way, you'll be able to tell them right away. There's nothing that happens in the universe that you can't tap into and get the true communications of what his intentions is so that you can execute your free will. That's how powerful you are. But man has to put you in school to calcify and smother that ability so you won't use it. You'll need a manual. You need to read a manual on what and how things work. So that's what I think, uh, Mel, great, great question. I think the best thing for us to do is to take an asymmetrical approach. Let them be them. Shall, shall I be I and build from there. So didn't um, mean to go that far, but 
you know, that's one thing with this show is that you never know where it's going to go. And I, and I absolutely love that about it. So great, great question, Mel. Um, if you wanted to jump back in um, or if anybody else had any questions or comments that they wanted to make, definitely give us a call, 866-510-9025. we got another caller in queue. Uh, we're going to go to that individual. I'm not quite sure. Scotty may have uh, left his uh, mic open. Uh, Scotty, if you wanted to jump in, definitely uh, do that. Um, we got a caller out of ATL, a uh, caller with area code 407. You're on with Tando Radio Show. What is your question or comment? Hey, Dave, this is Rob. How you doing, brother? Brother Rob, what's happening, man? Hey, now, man, uh, I just had a, a question. Uh, hopefully followed up with some advice. Uh, some some of us may have this problem or not, but I'm going to put it out there. Um, you know, once you decide in your mind that, you know, there's something wrong in the world and that you need to do something else, you know, you know what I'm saying. And mm -hmm. part of you know feeding yourself and being, realizing who you are and what's being played against you. All those three fashions right there. Those are three different things that you know that requires a lot of attention. So when you're around your family and some kind of way you try and get on a conversation. Is it the rational or the irrational part of us that allows people to just blow it off? You know, just say, you know, oh, he, you know, he doing this and talking about that. He that ain't got nothing to do with love and hip hop or the the sport <laughs> game and like that. So you know, it's a never mind. It's a it's a you know putting you to the side like. Yeah, he talking about some BS. So we gonna move on and you know talk about him and say something wrong with him. And when that at that point of time in your life, when do you think that what you portrayed and everything you've built, how does it become somewhat, or if it will ever become effective in the people that you love and that those that are around you? Man, great, great. Yes. <laughs> my, my sister, Strategic Melanin, said, find new friends. And, and she wasn't saying that in a bad way. She She's saying that because she I, she she gets what, you, what you're saying. And, and this is for friends and fa from, for family. And, and I would say is, is, is a couple of things. One, remember that at some point the overall schooling process was effective against us all. It was effective against me. And it's been effective against many of us. When we initially started our lives, it wasn't effective against us. This is why you'll see children interact in a different frequency with others. Because they hadn't been to school yet. And some of us do very well in school. Some of us get A's, B's, C's, D's, and F's. I got D's for David because it was something about it that just didn't resonate with me. I knew that they were full of full of it so I think that for your for your family members you love them through it is always a good thing my, uh, one of my good friends Stacy um, who, who made the great transformation I remember um, her daughter one day um, her daughter was like two years old I was we were hanging out at, and her daughter actually stole my wallet pickpocket and stole my wallet out my back pocket and I bust out laughing and I asked her I said, Stacy, baby, I don't want to say the, the baby's, uh, da well, I'm going to say the baby's name, I know. Da Danielle stole my wallet. One of the greatest lessons I ever had. And my sister, Stacy, said to me, David, I said, what you, what you going to do with her? And he says, David, I'm just going to love her through it. And sometimes when it comes to our family, we just have to love them through it without it adversely affecting who we are. And one thing that I always say that when it comes to our children, we definitely have to, to encourage our children to master the art of being lonely because every king and every queen and every creator 
has to master the physical and spiritual world alone. And that's the beauty of it. Once you're able to master it, it's the beauty of it. It won't be able to adversely affect it. You will always be able to endure whatever it is because they, they put you through it because they have mastered and they are thoroughly schooled and they want to stay there because it's comfortable. And they know it's not, they know it's not right. But what it is, is they don't have the overall intestinal fortitude to take their own stand because self-esteem, the schools have thoroughly built up their self-esteem. And if you need, if you have self-esteem by way of what the schools have taught you, you are an emotional wreck. Every decision is made is based off of the propaganda of comfortability. So when it comes to your family members, love them through it. Continue to do what you're doing. Don't force anything on them. Always be there. But always know this. At any point at any time, just like the great creator, sometimes you let them go on their own and make their own decisions and let them fall where you don't rescue. Because it's very important for us to start to rescue, rescue ourselves. It's it's something that, and once you start, and you already got it, Rob, it's, it's a difficult thing, and, and I know you say this for everyone else. It's a difficult thing, but it's right where you're supposed to be because you asked to be there. You said that there's something wrong with this. I can't do this. You can't look at... You can't look at yourself in the mirror and see what, what the great creator has created. You can't look at yourself in the mirror and see what, what the great creator has, mirror, has made. So if you can't look in the mirror and see what the great creator has made, then don't stop by any mirror. Let someone else tell you who you are. So love them through it. Continue to do what you're doing. Remember that we all once was thoroughly schooled. Some of us came out as full-blooded warriors and never, never, ever gave into it. That's a, that's a good thing, but that's, that may not be true for every individual. That's why it's so unique in who we are. So that's what I would definitely advise on that one. Um, you're doing exactly what you're sh you should be doing. That's why you're not popular. I won't drop them unless I get a thousand likes. You're not, you're balanced. You're not crazy. So, um, we got another call. Uh, uh, did you have something else? And we got another caller. Uh, Jerry's there. So I just wanted to let you know, I see you. Did you have a, uh, another, uh, portion of that, uh, uh, Rob, that you wanted to? No, no, no. I, I, I get you loud and clear, man. Big ten four and uh I sit here and listen. I, I got some a little bit more on my mind, but I'm a, uh I just I just mute myself and continue to listen to the show. Great, great question, brother. And on your journey of questioning, you are we right where you're supposed to be. You're right where you're supposed to be. And I think in the future the generations that you have yet not named will actually be far better off because you have broken the mold. You have built sovereignty, self-determination, and independence, the way that the great creator loved you through. Very, very important. So we got another caller. Uh, Jerry is um, on the line. Jerry, you there? Yes, yes. Can you hear me? Hey, what's up, Jerry? Welcome to Tando Radio Show, bro. What's going on? Hey, how are y'all? Got you doing? loud and clear. Here, calling from Chub, nigga. Uh, how you doing, brother Scotty? If if you at the uh, board, I'm 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 working on you. But that was just a uh, Scotty. Know what I'm talking about? All right, all right. Uh, thank you for all of the love. Oh, say again, Scotty. I he heard just, you. He said I, okay. I was just saying hello. Oh yeah, how you doing, brother? Hey. I, Man, I love tuning in to you, Brother Scotty, but that's another conversation. Man, y'all having a, a dynamic show tonight. Uh, can't believe my name had came up so many times, but that's, that, that, that made me feel good. But to the brother Rob, <laughs> man, down in, uh, in Atlanta, uh, and j 
just to expound on what you was talking about, Dave, you know, we all we all have our own crutches that we have to live with. Our family is not one of them. I think I think that's a big mistake that I made when I was a uh, when I was a younger child, trying to uh, not necessarily keep up with other people in my family, but trying to keep them up, not worrying about how I would fall out. You know, I was a I was a pretty smart child in school, but I didn't ever do no work because I didn't. You know, that's not what they done in my area. So what I would do is like the. Uh, my mama didn't have the ability to uh, keep me at home for homeschooling. I had a younger brother that I had to cook and cl- clean the house and get him ready and all of this stuff. So we would go to school. I wouldn't do nothing at all. I w- but I was passing with D's, and my mother found out that I was tutoring a couple of uh, friends of mine, and they went on to be valedictorian. Well, what what happened? Of course, my mama beat me because you know I'm, I'm an '80s child. They were still <laughs> doing that back then. But my mama. Uh, hold on, hold on, Jerry. Hey, Jerry, we getting ready to go to a commercial break because I want you to hold on right there because I don't want you to get too deep and 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 not be able to catch up where uh, you need to catch up. Listen, everyone, you're listening to Tando Radio Show brought to you by Black Car hey, Radio Network. Getting ready to go to a commercial hey, break. Hey, Dave, if I you'd hold, like to get in on the conversation, give us. Dave, I can hold off, man. I don't want him to lose his train of thought. I can hold off. Okay, okay, cool. All right, go ahead, Jerry. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to uh, sum it up real quick. Uh, like I was saying, in the 80s, they were still they were still beating them children like that. My mama laughs when I tell her that, but I still got a couple of bruises that I point out. <laughs> but anyway, though, you know, I, what, what would happen is that the teacher, the teacher would ask me questions to try to embarrass me. Well, I, I've never had no self-esteem problems, so I, I would laugh at the teacher, whether it was a male or a female, black or white, go up to the chalkboard, write the answer down. Well, I would write the question, whether it's math, science, or what have you. I wouldn't go through the formulas or nothing. I would do all that in my head and just write the answer and go sit back down, whether I'm flicking a little paper football or, or just talking to the, the girl or the, or the guy next to me. And they couldn't never understand why I was doing that. And when you bring that point up, Dave, that it doesn't make any sense to you, it doesn't mean that you don't understand. It's just it's not resonating with you, like you said. And it's a lot of us that falls behind because when I was coming up, and I know I'm not as old as some of the other people who be on here, but doing that, doing that crack era. You know, it wasn't a lot of it wasn't a lot of people that looked out for you as far as school. Hey, young brother, make sure you get those books. How you do on your How you do on your written exam today? You know, those aren't the questions that we was being asked. Right now, we having this uh this population of children coming up, and they not relying on school. They doing good in school because they don't want to have to deal with you know after school detention or going to ROTC or what have you. But not only are they doing good in school, they're doing good in the books at home. So I think that's some of the most important things that we could bring that what's missing out of the schools as far as like our history. Uh, Brother Scotty uh, brings up a lot of stuff. Some of the stuff I know, some of it I done heard about, some of it I, I had no clue. You know, and these are the same things that we have to bring to our children because uh, Brother Rob had just asked the question, what should we do? Brother Mel had asked the question, what should we do? These same questions that's being asked on this show tonight should be asked to your children and to your uh, your nieces and nephews, not for necessarily an answer, though, just to p- pose that question to them, and then they'll figure out the answer. They might even come and tell you what the answer is. So you just really getting them prepared as it goes on. I have uh, children from 15 down to 2 years old. And I ask all of them the same questions. They all come back with different answers. Later on, they all come back with different answers. And I always tell them, ain't nobody wrong. I'm just glad you're thinking about it. And these, these are the things that we have to do with our children, friends, children, nieces, nephews, even some of our older generation. Because there's a lot of our older generation who have no clue. They have no clue at all. So you can't always go off of what they say. You just have to put yourself in the mindset that you done figured this out already. Not necessarily that you have the answer, but that you done figured out that it is a problem. 
pose that question, pose that problem as a question, and let everybody else help you answer it. And uh, that's all I wanted to say, Dave. Yeah, and, and exactly, Jared, because I f- formally believe that it puts the onus back on, on the individual to develop their overall talents and ability because every individual uh, problem can be solved individually, may not have the same formula process for someone else, but it does for them. And this is because our overall talents and abilities are, are so so vast. There are many, many ways to get to a different destination. It doesn't have to be taken on the highways that man paved for you to go in one direction and one direction only. Hey, so Dave. well said. All right. Yeah, before we go to break, man, I just wanted to chime in on on the comment that was made that sometimes you got to love them through it because I'm going to tell you, I put my moms through it, okay? I put them through <laughs> some stuff, man, you know, worried about me, gang banging up there, running the streets in Detroit, and, man, she just always stood by me through thick and thin, man, and, and so... You know, I really, that really resonates with me. And like, you know, I have my own children now, even grandchildren. And I get frustrated, um, especially with one of my daughters at times. It seemed like she is intent on learning things the hard way. But if that's how she learns, then that's how she learns. But I'm still, I will never turn my back on her and I'll love her through it. So I appreciate hearing that. That's right. Man, Scotty, um, hold on. We're going to get ready to go to a commercial break. Uh, we got Roz um, uh, chimed in. Uh, Scotty, thank you for the, for the chime. We're going to go to the commercial break. I don't want to start anything more because uh, it's just so much. I, I'm going to tell you all something personal. I don't know how I'm going to get through it, but I'm going to share it with you all. Listening to Tando Radio Show, brought to you by Black Talk Radio Network. We'll be right back after this quick commercial break. Podcasts and live program scheduling, visit us on the web at blacktalkradionetwork.com. All right, welcome back, everyone, to Tando Radio Show, brought to you by Black Talk Radio Network. If you'd like to get in on the conversation, give us a call, 866-510-9025, 866-510-9025, and we will see you in queue. Definitely jump in. We'd love to hear from you. A a dialogue is much more important than a monologue, and um, so great, great dialogue, and I truly, truly appreciate because this is the building of a nation. And now the only thing that we have to do, and I know from, from all of you, this is what you do. Now you go out and you energize the building of that nation and that heaven. You, you build that sustainable entity, and you build that sustainable, self-determining, sovereign existence. You become the warrior of your own salvation so that there is a prosperity that you will be given to investing forward into your people. Those that you have yet not named And those that you may not have named at all But you still can resonate with Because they do exist The great love of it all is What works in harmony So we got another caller in queue uh, My man Roz is there um, Then uh, after Roz um, I don't usually do this I'm, <laughs> um, But I'm going to do it So we got my man Roz So we're going to go to it um, Roz what's going on brother thank you Hey, peace and love. Um, peace to you. Peace to King Scotty. It's great to hear him too. Jerry, Mel, Rob, everybody. It's a great, great program. Like everyone has said, I definitely um reiter- would like to reiterate that. And um, yeah, just to dig into Rob's question, man, listen, <laughs> I was a hell raiser. <laughs> My mom used to suffer all the time, man. I never forget. She would go to Trinidad to see my relatives. She'd be calling my sister every day. Is he okay? Is he safe? Because she knew. I, I ran the streets. I cut school because white supremacy. I cut school um, probably starting halfway through my my um, 14th, the year, the year of my, my age of 14, halfway through my ninth 
uh, ninth grade is when I started cutting and running the streets because of white supremacy, and then home wasn't always the um, the best place for me. So um, I had a photographic memory, so when it came to taking tests and whatnot, I would ace them every time. I was one of the smartest guys in my school, but I didn't do homework. I didn't care about homework. I was running with my boys. We all had similar experiences, so we got together, clicked up, and did things we had no business doing. And, you know, even though my relationship with my mom is quite strained and troubled, um, we don't communicate now, but ultimately um, she loved me through it. And she, she, man, I put it through torture, man. It's talking about even losing weight, getting sick, sometimes ending up in the hospital because she lost so much weight, stressing out about me. Um, So I know how that is, and it can be very hard. Now that I'm less confused, I can definitely say I'm thankful my son is the complete opposite to me. And I, I I can't say how much of an opposite personality type he is as far as him not getting into the things that I did and not giving me uh, stress as a parent, and I'm thankful for that. But the whole thing is now that I'm less confused, I really, really make an extreme effort to try and be as understanding as possible when I see other black people and even non-white people, but mostly black people more than anyone else, um, when they're going through things or they're doing things that, that may not resonate, like like um, Dave so eloquently said, that may not resonate with me, I understand because I was one of those people myself. So I don't judge folks. I try to do the best that I can to give them some insight if they take that information um, in, in a positive way and try to, to, you know, to do something with it or if they're interested in learning more, then I'll, you know, I'll facilitate that. If they aren't into it, then, yeah, you know, VGQ, it's no problem. You know, it's not going to... Um, you know, it's not whatever. As long as whatever they're doing is not affecting my daily reality, it doesn't mean that I don't care about them. It just means that I give them room to experience life the way that they're meant to experience it. Until something shifts in them, they might have an experience. Like Gus talks about this all the time about being understanding. And um, you know, one of the prayers that we say on our show, I got from the cows, being patient with other black people, um, is just that you might say something to someone today, and it may not resonate for years. And then something will happen where it'll finally click and they'll call you back and say, remember when we had that conversation about such and such and such? Wow, everything you said is so true. I get it. I mean, Dr. Wilson talked about friends and coworkers that she was talking to about white supremacy for like 30 years. One of her colleagues, she said she was talking to the brother for like 30 years. And he literally said, I thought you were out of your mind. I thought you was a rabid, crazy black, black Negro. This is what he basically thought of her. And it took 30 <laughs> years for him to finally, for it to click. And he sat and had a conversation with her and said, oh, my goodness, like, I can't believe, you know, how how incredibly ahead of your time you were with your understanding of the psychopathology of white supremacy and white people. And it's just it's something that happens as victims. We are trained to be stupid. We are not taught to think in a delectable Negro. I'll never forget it. One of the slave masters had brutalized his slave because he asked him to cook. Um, poached fish for him in the middle of a storm on the deck of a ship knowing that he would not be able to accomplish it and the the brother did the best that he could and he brutalized him and he actually fried the fish because he thought that that would be the best way to try and cook it while he's trying to keep the fire running in the middle of a storm on the ship and the, the slave master told him I didn't ask you to think I told you what I needed you to do and you needed to do it exactly how I told you to do it even though as a white man he knew he wasn't going to be able to accomplish it because it's in the middle of a storm and fire's not going to burn when it's raining, he still did it because he wanted to terrorize him. And we're not trained to think. Racism is is designed to make us stupid. It is designed to make us function idiosyncratically. It's designed to make us function to our detriment. The idea is to try and show as many people how the system works so that they get to understand that and like I said, they read the little quote I wrote in one of the posters that I put in Tando today. You know, hopefully once they start to understand how the system works, they can change their behavior according to their level of understanding. If they don't understand, do not fault them. You just do your best to help them when you can. And if whatever you're saying to them or you're trying to bring to their attention, they're not accepting, just 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 ease back because there'll come another time. And like I said, it might be, an hour from then, it might be 10 years from then, but they'll come back and say, what, whatever the quality of the discussion is, if you're dealing with truth and honesty about the way things work, they will come back to you to tell you what you said is accurate, and they'll probably at that point want more information on how to help themselves not suffer through the abuse that they suffered to up until the point that the truth you gave to them started to resonate with them. 
So I just say be as patient as possible, give it all to the ancestors and the creator, and um, it's going to take its course, and hopefully they survive, because I tell people, too, in this system, you don't always get a second chance. Trayvon didn't get a second chance. <laughs> Eric Garner didn't get a second chance. None of those people that died got a second chance. And, you know, we pray that they get a second, third, fourth, fifth chance because we deserve that as victims of white supremacy. We pray that the ancestors give us that, but we're not always granted that. And that's all I like to say. Thanks again. Brilliant program. And, um, yeah, I would love to talk about that. <laughs> the guy dangling his child off a 15-story um, window in order to get a 1,000 Facebook likes. That is just sheer insanity. And that, you're right, it does deserve um, a show in and of itself. But thanks again, good brothers, and I'll mute my line. Man, thanks, Roz, as, as always. Um, well, well said for, for everyone. Um, greatly, greatly appreciated. You know, the system always requires that you obey and surrender. The great creator has a ecosystem of cooperation for sustainability. And that's how it's really created. In order for that to go in a different direction, there has to be an energy change. And that energy change has to be sustained by someone. And if you're sustaining it, that's the direction you will go. So all the different, for everyone that called in, the, the viewpoints is, is so profound. And this is the overall building process that's so, so important among us all because we all have similar different um, experiences that bring similar experiences with different talents and it's still glorious what hey, we can Ray. achieve yeah there um who, uh, yeah go ahead uh jerry hey before, Is that jerry? before i know you i know you're closing it out but uh when you say that we have to sustain that energy uh this is just one of my personal views that i do with my children when you because we got to do this with these children while they're little. One of the ways that I do that is by confidence. I make sure that all of my children know that I have confidence in them because at this particular point, some some children may have confidence, but for the most part, they're still learning it. So I give my confidence in what they're doing. And it don't necessarily, it don't necessarily have to be wrong or right. It's just the, the confidence that I show in them breeds confidence within themselves so that's and i'm gonna get out your way dave i promise this no 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 that's 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 very very important because their overall true sincere self is being attacked so that they will actually not develop themselves and so how do you combat that there's an asymmetrical approach you create confidence within someone that is beyond reproach beyond reproach and there are so many ways to do it I love to do it with 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 my children is that I've always tried to do it with humor and just sin sincerity and you know it's if you practice those things and, and add your overall ingredients what what comes out is is what you've cooked now the overall acceptance of that is not your choice is their choice is their choice you heard the hard heads on here and how long it took them to you know who they put everybody through and we all did. oh my goodness but the hard heads have become strong warriors because that hard head was a reflection of how strong that talent truly truly is and I appreciate it. So, and to, to everyone, before we get out of here, just want to thank you all. Uh, those that called in tomorrow's show with uh, Brother Davis Wise Wednesday um, is going to be um, phenomenal for, for so many different ways and, and reasons, the sound. Um, Brother Davis is going to be looking at that, and this is all plays into this. It all plays back into the same thing, the building of our nation. And what is our nation? It's us individually that have collectively come together for a purpose of prosperity that will be passed on. So that's what it's really, really all about. I just want to thank, uh, before we get out of here, but, but before we get out of here, I do want to, uh, I do want to say this. I, probably one of the most difficult things that I've ever gone through in this physical time 
in, in this moment, in this chapter of this physical existence, not my eternity, but in this portion of it, is that it was a very personal thing that I had to love someone through. And because when my friend Stacy had told me that years and years before, my spirit immediately gravitated to that. And it helped me to endure the most trying time in my life. And it's always very trying when it comes to people that you love. And I just made a commitment as Scotty made to his child as uh, and children and, and as all we do with our, all of our children and all of those that we love. It's so easy to do what the system has taught us to do. Respond emotionally and expect a mo- an emotional outcome that does not build anything sustainable. And everything that we go through is truly, truly an opportunity for us to build on our talents. It doesn't matter what it is. It really only matters how you respond. So use that Develop your talents, develop your skills, develop what's sincere to you. Some of us, some people, the sincerity of destruction, subjugation, and enslavement, they're sincere to that, and they do it very, very well. And we see the effects of that in this physical moment in eternity. Very, very prevalent. But that doesn't mean that that is the right way, nor does it have to be your way. Develop who you are and invest forward. Just want to say thank you all to Brother Davis that called in. Thank you, Scotty, uh, who called in and put in, has put this whole thing together. Thank you, Roz, for calling in. Thank you, Mel, uh, for your great question. Jerry, thank you for your great input. And thank you, uh, Rob D. And I think one of the things that Rob D. was also was talking about was uh, the individual aspect of being different among those that have chosen to do things collectively from a faddish standpoint. First thing a king and a queen, excuse me, the first thing that a prince and a princess must master is the art of being lonely before they become a king or queen. Very, very important. You all are kings and queens. Now spread the wealth going forward. Much love, much respect. It's never goodbye. It's always, we'll see you later. Brother Bragg, if you would, chime us out. But but before we get out of here, wait, hold on, Brother Braggs. I want you to just, you know, give us some good fortune, you know, on, on just loving people through because... I, I thank you for so many, you know, the, the relationships that we have are, are so endearing and, and so, you know, necessary in developing who, are, who we are. I would not be as far along as I am or where I am in acknowledging some of my talents if it wasn't for you, if it wasn't for Scotty, if it wasn't for Brother Davis, Sister Davis, if it wasn't for Strategic Melanin, if it wasn't for for Deborah, it wasn't for Rob, if it wasn't for Roz, it wasn't for Mel, it wasn't for Jerry, if it wasn't for everyone that's a part of it, we all play into that, and I sincerely appreciate it, and I know, Brother Bragg, with you just in your journey, what, when you see, hey. and you talk about it all the time, you see young people, and you see your loved ones and things, doing things that you, that you know is a part of the system, I just had Give us some of the fortune that you found. I, I had this conversation with my sister, man, my older sister. She's like 80, man. And this is like somebody who changed my diet. You know what I'm saying? So I have to, I have to speak with her with due respect. But, but I don't, I don't waver when I speak to her because some of the things that she's speaking are things that we got to break the taboo. Some of these taboos got to be break, broken. I am a self-educated person. I quit school. I stopped going to school in the eighth grade when I realized it was just a waste of my time. By the time I got <laughs> to high school, I check in that homeroom. The homeroom teacher, she ain't here trying to rank on it. She playing the dozens with us, telling us what we're not going to accomplish. But yeah. I always had a book stuffed down in my pocket. I always had my own mind. So it didn't matter what she said. 
I already knew that what I was capable of because my mama taught me to read. So remember this, a queen always supports her king. So all of us that we were with these mamas, we were kings, we didn't know it, but your mama knew you was a king and she supported you. We worried them, but that that's what, hey, what, what can you do? Who, you wouldn't be who you were if you didn't take the path you chose. Now, all of these paths, they're converging. You, you may not know it, we are the same mind to a certain extent. And right, that, that's fabulous. In, in this kind of world, that is fabulous. Right. You just don't know. You can't. You can't find people that you can talk to or understand your your perspective. Nobody's gonna on this journey. Nobody's gonna be at the same point at the same time. Everybody's gonna reach these points at their predetermined time. And remember this: we all not gonna take the same amounts of breath either. Mm. On this, in this third dimension. We only going to have, each one of them have a predetermined amount of breaths. When you use those breaths up, you leave. You go back to your source, back to the, to the all, to that mind, to that energy. So while you're here, stay on that. You, my role for me, I try to keep a high vibration. Now, now feel, feel me. Right. I spend a lot of time by myself, on my own, because the things that I'm looking into, I need to have a clear head. And when I talk to people, I need to talk to people who know what I'm talking about, who don't try to ridicule me, who don't try to push me off my square. Even though you can't knock me off my square, I'm just saying I don't deal with that kind of nonsense. Especially when, like for instance, Brother uh, Davis was talking about the Reverend C.C. C. Jones. Now I tell all people, read Charles Kopeck Jones, The Religious Instruction for the Negro in America. That will put you up on game in America. Because this is how they use the Reverend. And see, I really didn't mean to go into that, but that's just how it goes. And, and see, Man. that's why I said we have one mind, because when I listen to you, brothers, you brothers trigger me all over the place. That's why I sit back and I be quiet. When I walk over to you, brothers, I go get to my studies. When I, I'm, I'm serious. When I listen to you, brothers, I go get into my serious studies, because you have me yes. fixed to do what I need to do. So remember, we all push each other. That's why some of you brothers know I share anything with you. All you got to do is ask. Yes. Yes. And every everyone that has reached out to brother De, uh, to brother uh, Braggs here um, knows that to be true, and de developed a relationship um, with brother Braggs, both from a standpoint as a someone that gives great insight and a personal one. And so I cherish that with, with all of you. And, and so one of the things I'm going to say this before we get out of here, one of the things I appreciate about Brother Bragg is that Brother Bragg always allows me to be me. There is not anything that, and I'm very, very, as, as, as many, um, I'm very selective in what I say and what I display. I remember going up in school, I realized something. I'm going to make them think that I'm dumb. I'm going to make them think a certain way so they won't notice me at all because their eye wasn't the one that I wanted to catch. This is the eye that I wanted to catch and to work with is all of you. So much love, much respect. And Brother Bragg, thank you for being who you are so we're getting ready to get out of here brother Bragg if you will chime us out it's never goodbye it's always we'll see you later much love much respect before you ask for a fortune make sure to give one away peace 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 let's stay on our peace Dinar would have had serious consequences for the world financial system, but may also have empowered the people of Africa, something black activists say the U.S. wants to avoid at all costs. We're slicing cake. We're slicing cake. We're slicing cake. Say the U.S. wants to avoid at all costs. We're 
ice and cake. Say the US wants to avoid at all costs. Gaddafi didn't give up. In the months leading up to the military intervention, he called on African and Muslim nations to join together to create this new currency that would rival the dollar and euro. They would sell oil and other resources around the world only for gold dinars. It's an idea that would shift the economic balance of the world. Countries' wealth would depend on how much gold they have, not how many dollars they trade. And Libya has 144 tons of gold. 